So hello everybody. People are walking in now, getting comfortable. We're expecting around 100 people today. I'm just waiting a little bit so that everybody uh, is ready to start. What is a 45 minute webinar on Netherlands business in Los Angeles during the COVID-19 time. So good morning to everybody in the US. Good morning um, to everybody in the Netherlands. Good evening. Thank you very much for your uh, flexibility. And before I uh, start, uh, I want to express my sympathy to all those people affected uh, by the coronavirus. Uh, it's a terrible situation. Um, and also I want to make sure that uh, although we're going to highlight some examples of businesses that are success successfully adapting, that we absolutely don't want to sugarcoat the seriousness of this, uh, of this pandemic. Um, I just want to make sure uh, that, uh, yeah, we try to inspire, but we absolutely understand the situation. So then furthermore, uh, I want to, um, um, yeah, just go through some practicalities. And my colleague Jan will help me here uh, with uh, dropping a poll in the screen. And this is the thing with the technical uh, devices, you are now 100% relying on them. Um, I was wondering what your level of experience is with Zoom, because everybody using a lot of different apps, uh, and I would just want to make sure that you, are, uh, you can be engaged as much, uh, much as possible. And when we have just enough results, then let's see what, uh, what your level of experience is. And if Jan, in the meantime, can share the presentation with me so I can remote it as well, that would be great. I see that actually uh, most people now are using it regularly and a lot of people using it daily. That's good to see. So let's, uh, let's move on. Um, some other things uh, I want to go over is uh, that it is a Zoom webinar. It's not a Zoom meeting, which means that you can see me, but I cannot see you. And um, a second thing is that you can ask questions using the Q&A. Um, so we, we're going to make sure that we're going to answer most of your questions, either through the chat or just live here in the webinar. Uh, and if we're not able to do that because there are too many questions, perhaps, then, we try, then we're definitely going to follow up. And also all the content will be, will be shared. But it's good to know, by the way, that sometimes the speaker is still talking uh, and, uh, while the previous speaker is still in the view. That happens mostly in your iPhone or iPad. So be aware of that. You can just tap your the screen and then uh, the speaker that is actually speaking will be in the, in the screen. So also the team behind the scene here, you see my colleagues from the uh, Consulate General in San Francisco. I should actually say the e-consulate, which is launched last week to make sure that all our information, knowledge, and support is still readily available to you. Uh, Jan and Deborah will help me with moderating this uh, webinar, and Deborah is, uh, is especially focusing on the, on the chat so that your, all your questions will be seen and considered. So let's move on. I arrived in Los Angeles in January, and yeah, to open the new Netherlands business support office here, the Dutch government decided that they should have a presence here, a trade office. I had a flying start, and as you can see, people were still not afraid to, to stand close to, uh, to each other. But actually, that quickly changed, obviously. Uh, this is my 100 days later. I wish I, uh, I could say something else, but obviously, we're in the same situation. You see here, Eric Garcetti, he's the mayor of Los Angeles. This was when he announced that we are now um, obliged to wear a mask on the street. Um, yeah, and it's the same situation here. People promised me a great outdoor life in Los Angeles, but I think everywhere in the, it's the same now, it's, it's inside. And they also warned me about the, the horrible traffic in Los Angeles, but the streets are completely empty. And people tell me that throughout their lives, they live there, they never have seen this, uh, this, this happening. And, I know this is the same in every city, but especially in Los Angeles, this is a very known uh, challenge. So um, yeah, I mean, it also has some bright sides uh, for the environment. Well, long story short, we are in the same situation here in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. It's the new reality, the digital reality, and it makes everybody wonder what to do now, what to do next. And, you know, I had the privilege to, uh, to already uh, uh, work with some great people living here, some Dutch people, and a few weeks ago we also asked this question uh, to ourselves, what can we do now? And we also jumped on the wave of organizing uh, webinars. Uh, several of these uh, great webinars are already organized and um, they will be shared at the end. And we tried to do something perhaps uh, a little bit different, maybe to, to inspire or to give some ideas on how uh, several companies are, uh, are now dealing with this. 
So this is the agenda that we, uh, that we prepared. And we're actually very interested to know what you are most interested in. So there's a little poll coming up. Jan will help me with that. So and as, you, as you can imagine, these are uh, three great speakers. I will introduce uh, them to you a little bit later. Uh, they could fill a complete webinar by themselves uh, considering all the knowledge uh, they have. So it's, it's, it was very challenging to already squeeze all this information in 45 minutes, especially because uh, uh, we also want to make sure that uh, there's some interaction with you. Um, so we made it broad so that the audience, uh, I think we're about with some hundred people here now from different industries that you also feel uh, related to the different topics. So I'm wondering um, uh, what the results are. Okay, that's great, that's great. We, we're gonna have some, some uh, almost like 10 examples. Uh, so it's great to see that you're most interested in the, uh, in the examples. So we're gonna, we're gonna get there. So let's first start with a little bit of an update on the situation in, in Los Angeles. Um, first speaker in the panel is uh, Jeff Kiesbury. And Jeff is a familiar face here in Los Angeles. Yeah, he's super active already for the last 15 years in Los Angeles. He organized a lot of Dutch American uh, events uh, here in Los Angeles. And yeah, he is, um, he's president of the Netherlands American Foundation, obviously also founded Dick the Dutch. Um, but perhaps his biggest fashion is, is food. Uh, he wrote four cookbooks uh, in the Netherlands and in English in the United States on the Indo-Dutch uh, kitchen. He's also catering uh, a lot of events and he's also doing cooking classes. And well, actually now he's going to do online cooking classes. So perhaps soon uh, you will meet Jeff again in a different uh, setting. Uh, Jeff, it's an honor to have you in this, uh, in this panel. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Peter, for introducing me and for allowing me to share what's happening with some of the sectors here in LA. We love living in sunny LA and where everything happens outdoors. Now with COVID-19, many of us are asked to remain indoors. Hashtag stay home saves lives. We are doing it. Things have changed. LA's vibrant tourism and hospitality sector, one of the largest in the world, has taken a huge hit due to COVID-19. Most public attractions have shut down. On the upside, social distancing is easy to do with vacant streets. LA entrepreneurs are being challenged and are switching gears. A friend of mine, uh, he has a private touring uh, company here in LA and he has pivoted his business to making facial masks at home to meet high demands. He sells hundreds of them online. LA is tech savvy, also known as Silicon Beach, home of over 500 technology startups. Talking about technology, especially now, many are realizing that streaming is the new goal. For instance, with fitness clubs closed, health conscious Angelinos are finding other ways to stay fit. More are going digital and into the cloud. This way, fitness instructors maintain a personal touch and keep revenue flowing. Virtual exercise is big. The amazing LA food scene is looking different. Restaurants are closed and, streets vend and street vending is outlawed. Famous chefs are now giving online cooking classes and even the smallest restaurants made the switch to online ordering with curbside pickup and home delivery. Groceries are delivered through Amazon, Fresh and Instacart. We see unemployed restaurant workers going back into the kitchen, working with the Red Cross to provide dinners to family and friends. Healthy and free meals from LA restaurants are served to frontline healthcare heroes during the COVID-19 crisis. This is a chance to give back and from business perspective, they stay top of mind. LA entrepreneurs are asking the question, what can we do differently? What can we offer? Not to exploit the situation, but to better serve our community. Overall, companies in LA are becoming resilient. Their supply chain seems almost intact and local enterprises are now going global. I'll be happy to share more samples of companies that are adapting later. Back to you, Peter. So Jeff, thank you very much for the very, uh, well, short overview of a lot of information. Uh, we're going to move on to the next speaker, which is uh, Sasha. Sasha, uh, actually in his career and his life, his journey in life, soccer and sports have been central to it. He started in the Netherlands doing great, then jumped on an opportunity in North California, San Francisco, and from then onwards to Belize. 
I, th I guess he likes the weather uh, here a lot. And then arrived in 2000 in, in Los Angeles. Um, he, he settled down in Los Angeles. Uh, he worked uh, especially in the coaching area for Shiva's and later on for LA Galaxy, where up until recently uh, he worked as an academy coach and director over there. And now focuses uh, ma mainly on, on the Hub, a company that he founded to support companies here in LA and the founder of the, the Home Field Advantages, which is a leadership uh, program. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have Sasha here in the panel, and he can tell you a lot about the sports and events the sector in, in Los Angeles. Uh, Sasha, please uh, take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for, for the invitation uh, and the, uh, the kind introduction. Um, besides entertainment, LA can be seen as a global sports capital. Uh, the major five sports in the region, all represented by two pro teams each. Sports are ingrained in the city's views with alternative sports like surf, skateboarding, mountain biking, etc. Universities are major players in the game and have national competitions with fitting arenas and facilities. Um, community colleges, high schools and club sports did not even fit on this screen, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a giant community of, uh, of sports in LA. In the upcoming years, LA will be in the limelight of sports events with the Super Bowl 2021, the World Cup 2026, and the Olympics in 2028. Now looking at the situation during um, COVID-19, all major leagues are closed and on hold. And as Major Garc uh, Mayor Garcetti said yesterday, sports and events might not be back until 2021. General managers and commissioners are working on alternative scenarios. And looking at the NBA, um, they came up with, an, with, a, with a plan uh, to isolate the playoffs in Las Vegas. And uh, Major League Baseball has had a similar, similar plan uh, and they're thinking about uh, opening their season in an isolated format in Arizona. The biggest news out of MLS is that they will be taking over the top youth league in the country from US soccer but no news on the, on the decisions at the first team level yet. The college, amateurs and youth sports are all in the same boat. Facilities are closed and all leagues are put on hold. Um, the pay to play clubs continue to serve their clients. They take their practices online and focus on individual development. Personal connections with the coaches, uh, and if we look at the future now of both pro and amateur level, it's fairly similar. Streaming games with smaller and no audiences, uh, prepare for social distancing in the future, uh, creating a, a more uh, healthier and, and safer society, and the staff jobs are very insecure. Back to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sasha. And uh, as you might see in the meantime, I'm trying to improvise because uh, some things are going different than we, uh, we practice, but that's all part of the game. It's learning by doing for everybody that's doing webinars uh, these days. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next uh, speaker and it's great to have her uh, in, in the panel as well. Uh, Marika Audians, her adventure in Los Angeles started in 2003. She studied at a very prestigious uh, university and program here, the UCLA NFA um, Producers Program. Uh, there she was taught by really famous uh, and, and great professionals in the field and that's where actually her career started uh, very soon after graduation uh, she did pretty much everything you can imagine in the film industry and she became the person uh, for dutch and european companies to go to when they wanted to do productions or filming in the united states uh, at the moment it's very obvious that uh, well in 2010 she was the co-founder together with the consulate of the holland hollywood connection and now she scrams all her expertise in her own company, Emphasis Production, with which she helps companies, uh, uh, film productions uh, being successful here in, uh, in Hollywood. So Marika, I would like to give the word to you. Give us uh, some information on the entertainment sector. And this is what happens. She's on mute, but she will be unmuted very soon. <laughs> Good evening, the Netherlands, and good morning, Los Angeles. Thank you, Peter, for this nice introduction. Can everyone hear me okay? Absolutely. 
Fantastic. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, um, over the past few weeks, I've been busy um, asking a lot of my friends and peers in the industry uh, how they're doing and what they're doing at this exact time. I've talked to agents, uh, distributors, sales agents, producers, directors, writers, actors, you name it. And everyone from very successful to just beginning out is overall keeping quite busy, I should say, doing a lot of things except physical production for the most part. So people are still developing new content. Uh, there's actually an increased demand for content. As you know, everyone's at home watching, and binge watching the series and such. Um, there's um, uh, a lot of expectation that in the future, you know, there'll be there'll need to be new shows that appeal to what the current situation is. Uh, so they're looking for uplifting themes and Corona proof shows, if you will, which means perhaps lighter budgets, lighter crews to shoot it if you have to keep social distancing in mind. And so development is still happening. People are still financing. People are lawyers are still working on existing deals or having to adapt uh, deals to the current situation where things are being moved around. Um, there's still, uh, of course, sales are happening, but it's hard to predict delivery de dates uh, for shows because not ev everything can be completed. Uh, Post production is still happening, but it's all in altered forms. And how that's being done, I'll discuss a little bit later. But I think what's relevant to note at this point is two things. Um, one, in a way, Hollywood has been preparing itself for this uh, type of situation for a long time. If this would have happened maybe 10 years ago, it would have been different. But what you've seen over the past few years is that a lot of the uh, studios are, have been setting up their own streaming services. Yesterday, uh, Peacock was launched as sort of a soft launch. Uh, Disney Plus just uh, amassed 50 million subscribers. So there's a lot of um, avenues now to place your content other than in the movie theaters. Another interesting thing to note is that of course, if you work in Hollywood, you have to be an optimist because everything here is around built around uncertainty. You never know if a project's gonna go until it's going. And so I think in a way, a lot of the creative people here are accustomed to this, this world in which you never know whether you'll get a part uh, whether your movie will go, whether it will be shot until the day that it happens. And I think that resilience will help everyone pull through. Thank you, Peter. So, uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Marika, for this very brief overview. I know already questions are, uh, are coming in. We just take a moment to, uh, to listen to you, uh, everybody at home. Uh, I'm sometimes watching different screens to see what questions come in. It's a lot of uh, things at the same time here. Uh, one question, uh, Marieke, is actually directly uh, pointed to you. Uh, it's a question from Bas van der Rey. Uh, what about your thoughts about the charm actions of Netflix, uh, both in California and around Europe? Can you say something about that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Uh, what about Netflix? Uh, yeah, the question is, uh, um, the, let me check it again. So it's flickering in the screen. What are your thoughts about the charm actions of Netflix, both in California uh, and around Europe? The, the charm, charm action, as he calls it, yeah. Charm action, hi boss, nice that, uh, to see you uh, participate in this. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by charm actions. Um, are you meaning that uh, they're luring in uh, customers at this exact time? Because that's of course something that is happening uh, at a great scale. I think a lot of the streaming services are now offering either free content or competitive pricing so that they can lock in uh, you know, people that hopefully will be subscribers in the future. I'm not sure if that's what he's referring to or if I'm uh, missing something in the term charm actions. Uh, I cannot directly talk to him, but I, I think he's referring to that. The fact that they're adapting or actually uh, um, yeah, trying to anticipate on, on the situation. But I think yeah. you already answered it, uh, it a little bit. Um, actually, we also got another question already from somebody signing into this, uh, to this webinar as well. It was about the current situation. I mean, to what extent is Los Angeles at the moment open for new Dutch innovation? Is this the right time to start about business, starting new relationships? And I would like to ask this question to Jeff. Jeff, if you mind uh, answering this question. Um, I think the climate is such that uh, people are approachable but I would uh, put more the focus instead of yourself uh, on what can you offer them. Uh, that's a short answer. It's about what can you give to the community and how can you help uh, the, 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 the companies that you're approaching. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, that's a nice and very concise uh, uh, answer. 
Uh, I think maybe the, when we're going to go into the uh, into the examples uh, which are coming up right now, I think that would also trigger more of the audience and what's going on uh, in, in Los Angeles. Um, and I'm great to see that we actually got a lot of uh, examples from different fields and also a lot of cross-sectoral examples. Uh, first examples uh, will be given by uh, by Jeff. Um, so Jeff, yeah, please um, enlighten us. to uh, with my, my glitch here. Okay, thank you, uh, Peter. The world is adapting like the Netherlands is adapting. Uh, we see credos in LA and the following samples of companies I approached. First, uh, gift box subscription company uh, by the name Fitbit Fun. Uh, hospitals uh, inquired if there are facial products to help uh, with rashes caused by frequent use of masks. That means that this company went from offering just beauty products to also now offering also personal hygiene products or also put more emphasis on that. And that's thinking outside the box, pun intended. Also, they feel they play a positive role during this crisis, both by delivering useful products to people directly at home, but also by being a welcome surprise in these difficult times. They can quickly adapt with existing platform in place, all to better serve the community. And their tip is uh, LA is a, an informal network, develop context, get connected, bootstrap ideas and get market feedback before making investments to further develop. Second company, event agency, the very creative firm. They've had some event cancellations due to COVID-19. Now for some clients, they are creating new digital online ideas. They expect live events to continue to exist, but some will partly be live streaming. They said also in difficult times, strengthen customer base by staying connected and look for distractions with creative solutions. For instance, they uh, offered coloring pages for kids of their clients and puzzles for the adults. So it's not all about business. Their tip is don't panic, give yourself time and room to think. Despite others' opinions, stay on track, believe in yourself. Last but not least, plant-based startup Plantable, winner of the Holland in the Valley Award. The Netherlands is quite advanced in this industry, especially now in LA, people become more aware of safer, sustainable plant-based food. We're coming from animal protein, prior viruses stem from animals, and we're going to plant-based protein, duckweed. This pandemic shows people the impact of animal agriculture on society. This situation accelerates plant-based diet. Additional benefit now, with these layoffs everywhere, there's a fight for talent for new companies. So this company is extending their HR funnel. A tip from their side, great companies are the result of persistence and motivation. Economic crisis can provide opportunity to flourish. Fortune favors the ball. Thus far, back to you, Peter. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff, on this uh, various uh actually bouquet of different examples. We're gonna move on to uh, Sasha, which has another three examples from the field. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, my, uh, my first example um, is, a, is a company from, uh, from the Netherlands. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, looking at the situation at, uh, at COVID-19. Um, this, uh, this company is called VTON. Uh, they serve the co soccer community in, uh, in the Netherlands with a complete age-specific soccer curriculum app. It's focused on providing a fun and educational experience for all. The focus is on providing youth coaches and clubs full, uh, full support and guidance, guidance during soccer training sessions for teams and groups. They reach about 80,000 uh, people uh, or youth soccer players in the Netherlands um, on, on a regular base, two, two, three practices a week. Um, with... When Corona uh, hit and uh, they started to think about how can they serve their community better, um, they shifted their attention to the, the player app that they, re that they um, already developed before, but was more um, uh, yeah, fitting for this situation right now. So the shift went from team to individual sessions. And the player app um, was sent out to, do, to, uh, to players within the clubs. So the shift went from, uh, from team to player and then an eight week program, uh, they, they currently rolled that out. Uh, three sessions per week, it comes with mental, mental exercises, nutritional information, etc. Since starting on April 6th, they now have about 100,000 views. 
individual development, coach monitor, and communication with players. Due to the success of the downloads on the Play app, VTON is now rethinking its future plans and including their expansion to the United States. The next example that I'd like to give um, is also related to sports, um, but then in the, in the infrastructure world. Um, this is a company, a Dutch, Dutch owned company um, in the United States, um, Newton Brown Urban Design. Um, they work all over the US and uh, work in, in uh, furnishing public spaces. Besides rethinking their business approach to their clients, they shifted uh, to new product design. So thinking about um, cleaner environment and um, social distancing, what, what does the, 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 um, uh, the new environment look like? So the product design went out to cleaner spaces. Sanitation stand was developed um, and at the, for at the entrances of stores, restaurants, museums, stadiums, etc. Another example is a safe public space. Smart benches were, the, were is another example of a product that already existed, but is even more uh, relevant right now, where it gives real time communication. Dis, uh, the the real time communication display provides an opportunity to quickly. Uh, send out messages and help public awareness uh, in time of, of emergency. That brings me to, uh, to my third example. And the third example is a company uh, from the Netherlands as well. They're called I Am Progress. They re revolutionized the HR world by utilizing gamification to assess, to make uh, soft skill assessments. Um, Making accurate profiling for employees becomes more fun like that and they provide assessments at all levels within organizations. They notice the quick shift in workforce and need for people to adapt to new careers. Many sectors were losing, uh, losing jobs. People had to step out of their jobs and just millions of people here in, in, uh, just in California are applying for uh, unemployment. So a big shift needs to be made. Currently, I Am Progress is working on developing an, uh, an application or an assessment program that can quickly assess if somebody is matched for a career in another, in another field, specifically the health sector. Um, very much serving the, the, the community um, and looking out for, for opportunities for people to, uh, to adapt to, to life uh, during and after COVID-19. These are my examples uh, for, for this moment. Um, thank you, Peter. Thanks, for, uh, thanks so much, uh, Sasha, for highlighting uh, these. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to the examples uh, from Marika. Those are not necessarily examples from entrepreneurs, but Marika spotted more trends in the Hollywood and entertainment scene. So, Marika, the floor is yours. Thank you so much again, Peter. Yes, well, we're uh, welcomed here by Tom Hanks, who hosted SNL From Home. Uh, that you see his wonderful kitchen here in the background uh, just the other day. And it's, of course, a new way of hosting and presenting live shows. They're taped from the houses. Ellen is doing the same. Her show is taped from her own living room. And um, new shows are also being done with remote interviews and um, with people, social, the host or the anchor social distancing in the, uh, in the studio environment. You might see it on the next slide where we have... Um, uh, two anchors who are now instead of sharing cozily sharing one desk they are meters apart um, and presenting that way what often happens as well is that they have various anchors presenting from different areas within the studio uh, live audiences are uh, cut out obviously so there's a new way of trying to film these new shows and these live show these talk shows and uh, late night shows from a home environment which is interesting and um, you know it's I, I, I thought looking at SNL and seeing all these actors performing sketch from their homes was uh, something very new and gave us a better understanding of where they came from I don't know how interesting it will be in the long term to always have that same environment and what you miss of course is a little bit of the uh, yeah the dynamic of having a group together and that's hard to beat but anyway that's the first example um, that everyone's taking it in stride and moving forward with the programming the next example is, um, as you can see here, a Zoom meeting. This is actually a writer's room that's being held, but this is just one of many examples of teams coming together and doing post-production or development steps online. 
I've talked to a, a number of people in the industry who are currently doing this and they've said to me that although you can still make progress on your comedy script working in this fashion, of course, you don't really feed off each other as well as you would if you were in one room. Um, the next slide will show us um, actually a trend that has been going on in Hollywood for a while. And I think it's interesting to note again, because this also points in the direction of Hollywood in a way being prepared for a situation like this. This is a self-taping self actor. What's been happening in Hollywood over the last years is that oftentimes for auditions, you're no longer required to come in, but you take your own tape, your own audition and send that in. And this cuts out many steps and many opportunities to see a, to see casting directors, um, you know, until you are perhaps asked back to, uh, to do more. Um, so this is one example of someone uh, taping from her house. Uh, this doesn't only uh, work for auditions, this works for uh, your own scenes that you may want to do. We've seen a lot of things go viral, uh, actors that have uh, performed uh, funny uh, little scenes or, or sometimes honest little scenes uh, depicting their current life. Um, I just read that uh, there will be a show in Spain where five directors are being asked to um, create a little scene or a little 15 minute um, a movie, so to speak, using only the things that are available in their house. Uh, and they've been provided a, an iPhone to shoot with. But other than that, uh, it's just using the people that may you know, happen to live with them uh, or, and the equipment that they happen to have around. And another example is Roger Corman, who's a prolific uh, producer who's done over 400 minimal movies over the you know, past decades. He's now in his 90s. He just uh, announced an initiative yesterday, sort of in a, um, a challenge where he challenges everyone to come up within the next two weeks with a short movie, no longer than two minutes, using only natural lighting and only your iPhone and send it in for his own little competition. So there's a lot of creative stuff going on like that. And I, I'd like to say one last thing that is that, um, of course, we are all familiar with the phenomenon of YouTubers and uh, influencers. And I, in a way, they have uh, paved the way for us doing this. And they've shown us that you can use minimal content and low production value to create interesting things that will generate an audience. And right now, this is the best time to get an audience because you have a captive audience. And people are not going to be bothered about minimal production value because they understand the situation that you're in. So be proactive if you have the time, if you're not looking after 20 little children and you know, having other concerns, health concerns or things to do. If you have the time, you have creative ideas, this is, this is the opportunity to, um, to make yourself seen and heard. Marika, thank you very much. Those were all really nice uh, examples. So we're going to move on uh, to the, uh, to the uh, question and answers. Um, just some, some answers already, uh, uh, some questions already answered by my colleague uh, Deborah. Um, as I mentioned, the content that will be shared, the recordings and the presentation afterwards, so you will receive those, including all the links included later on in the presentation. Uh, there was another question uh, about uh, what the Netherlands Business Support Office uh, does uh, at the moment. Well, um, actually, it's, it's in a way business as usual than digital and a lot of uh, tools and instruments that we have available are also now especially attuned for uh, this COVID uh, period. And besides that, we're still here to connect you uh, to the relevant partners. And although it's a different time, uh, also in Los Angeles, people are adapting to this new situation. Um, well, a question uh, to you, uh, uh, Sasha. Since these uh, huge sport events, they are still far away. Uh, and obviously, there are a lot of sport events uh, always going on. But I'm talking about the Olympic Games and the World Cup. Uh, is this still the right moment to get connected since it might be a very painful moment, whereas everything is, is canceled at the moment? What would your uh, answer be uh, to that question? Yeah, good, uh, good question, Peter. Thank you. Um, these are giant events um, and, you know, obviously years in the making. Um, and to, uh, to, to give you an example, we already started two years ago with, uh, with conversations uh, in, in our area here in LA, um, also with the, with the mayor's office uh, connecting and talking about how the, the Netherlands could, uh, could help out or be, be involved and companies from the Netherlands could be involved with, with the Olympics coming up in 2028. Um, on that end, yeah, it's obviously it's about looking at what the, the, the community needs over here. What, what can we provide uh, from, from kind of services that we have 
uh, in the Netherlands, and that can be done better over here, or that can can serve this uh, this community. Um, and um, at the same time, in between, like the the, the World Cup 2026 came up. So, but my advice is really to to um, yeah, it's about building relationships, and these kind of projects are year long projects. They take a lot of lot of planning. Um, if you want to be in that uh, in that game um, or in that project, um, it's uh, it's it definitely helps to uh, to get connected with uh, with the right people, and uh, reach uh, reach out. And um, yeah, we are uh, we are here to uh, Peter and myself can uh, can help out on that uh, that end as well to uh, to get connected to uh, people from our network. And to add on that, Sasha, maybe it's good to mention that at this very moment, there's also still study going on to, uh, to actually identify opportunities for the Dutch sports sector. Um, yeah, and that's also still continuing. And uh, you will definitely come back uh, on that together with the colleagues from the consulate and, uh, and the FME in the Netherlands. Um, some questions are asked to, uh, to Marika on the entertainment sector. Uh, one, one question is, in the Netherlands, the film industry is completely down. The television industry is still running, but only a few studio shows. Not much content is being made. Is there a difference in LA between film and television? Marika, what would your uh, uh, reaction be to that question? Um, well, the, the major studios, the big, the big shoots are all canceled right now. There's no way you can do a major production with uh, hundreds of crew and actors, etc. cetera. Um, I think the examples I gave of the news programming that has resumed the, um, uh, the what was I saying? The, uh, the talk shows, etc. Those are uh, several things that are that they're trying to do. I just read that Florida uh, is considering sports broadcasting to be an essential business. I guess it's good for the economy, so they've allowed WWE wrestling programs to resume, but with social distancing rules and minimal crew, etc. Interesting to see, though, that um, in some places they consider, you know, the econ economics to be uh, more important. It seems than uh, than the guidelines that we've all been abiding by. Um, is it different in the Netherlands than in the US? I don't think so. I think right now, um, as I said, most productions are on hold, but people are getting ready to you know, think about the future. Uh, they know there's gonna be a lot of demand for content. So some of the things that people are thinking about is shows that can be done with lighter crews or Obviously, the non-scripted world will have a leg up because it's easier to produce non-scripted than complicated dramas. But there's one drama, actually, that is resuming production. They're going to make a Corona episode where all the actors, and this will, work, will be worked into the storyline, but all the actors will be uh, acting within their homes and uh, it will be shot in a social distancing kind of a, a way. So there's some experimenting going on. But I think overall, it's similar in the Netherlands um, uh, as it is here. And I read that in the Netherlands, uh, people are forming initiatives to come up with guides, and, and Bas probably knows all about this, but uh, Bas van der Rey, who's the film commissioner, um, f trying to find out guidelines that would allow them to pick up light production. And I'm wondering where that will go and if it will result in some production uh, starting up again in the Netherlands soon. Yeah, thank you, Marika, for this elaborate answer. Um, I'm going to move on to the next. Uh, actually, this question also came in a little bit uh, before the webinar started. Um, it's, it's pointed towards Jeff. Uh, Jeff, you have been around here for, for a while. You have been in touch with, with Dutch uh, Americans. Uh, there are obviously cultural differences. Uh, in your perspective, uh, do Americans deal differently, and maybe especially in the business community, to this whole situation than, than Dutch entrepreneurs uh, do? And do we have to be aware of certain, certain cultural differences that are, that are maybe more visible now? I think the Could Dutch uh, aren't. Hello? Yeah, here we are. The Dutch uh, are known to be very direct uh, and you would expect from Americans to also be very to the point. My own experience was a bad one in that respect. I was too direct and I was been told, uh, I've been told to be a little bit more politically correct and softer. So be careful how you approach people. Uh, but like now in these times, it's not about exploiting the, um, the situation. It's very much focusing on, uh, in, uh, on inquiring and also on what you might be able to offer them. So uh, I think Americans, of course, are very approachable even now, but be careful. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jeff. Um, 
another question, uh, I mean, questions are coming in now and I'd like to answer as, as many as possible. Uh, another question is on eSport and that's definitely uh, pointed towards uh, Sasha. Uh, Sasha, can you say something on uh, the shift towards eSport at the moment? Is, is, that, is that something already visible to you or maybe companies, maybe the, 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 the traditional sport organization? What's your uh, view on that? Yeah, good question. Um, seems uh, very, fairly logical to uh, for esports to uh, to uh, have an accelerated uh, development right now. Um, but this is this is also something that has been uh, developing already over the over the last uh, last few uh, few years. Um, comp and the, also at the level of integration of uh, of these um, uh, esport events into mainstream uh, events. So as um, as an example, also um, from the Netherlands, um, of a company that has developed uh, uh, like um, VR kind of uh, kind of esport games, um, and they uh, they are interested in um, in participating here at uh, uh, at bigger events. So uh, connecting them with Major League Soccer, maybe with the NBA, and have uh, these kind of events going on during um, or before. Um, games or events happening here, like uh, could be tournaments, um, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I would I would think uh, think that um, COVID nineteen will definitely help with uh, with social distancing, um, the the development of uh, of esports, um, and um, yeah, it's something that has already started and will m m most likely be uh, accelerated uh, in the in the near future. Thank you so much, uh, Sasha, for uh, for your reaction. And um, so sure, we, we we got a question on on that we should do these webinars more often. Uh, thanks, uh, Antonio Achelink for for contributing so many uh, good questions. Uh, yeah, we think so too. I mean, uh, this is uh, this is our first one. It's uh, it's different from a normal uh, seminar workshop. Um, so we hope you still uh, like it a lot. But also we wonder what kind of other topics you would like to see in an, in a future webinar. So uh, besides questions, uh, just also share your thoughts on what you would love to see in a webinar, what you haven't seen before, uh, what, would, what would be really helpful to you. Um, so and then, then I have a, a question for, uh, for Marike uh, in the entertainment sector. So you, you mentioned self-taping, you mentioned uh, home is the new studio. studio. Uh, how relevant is, is Hollywood still, uh, I mean, in terms of being there physically? Uh, isn't isn't everybody now able to to produce things from home or from their own location? What's your view on that? Yeah, that's uh, am I unmuted? Yes, um, that's of course the, the million dollar question, and it's a question Hollywood has been asking itself even before this all went down. Uh, it's not for without reason that they're moving. The studios are moving into all these streaming services. Um, is there going to be a use for, for Hollywood? Well, a lot of it will depend on what the future looks like and no one knows exactly. Will movie theaters continue to exist in the way that we know them? Will people flock back to them craving that social and shared experience or are they going to be staying away thinking let's avoid crowds and masses for the next you know, five years? Um, so will that be the avenue to release films in the future? We don't really know. Um, Yes, we can produce a lot of things ourselves, but you have a lot of talent, a lot of expertise, a lot of financing here that allows big budget productions that you would not be able to make in your backyard. And I think there's always going to be um, a desire for the access uh, to that talent and to that scope of a production that you wouldn't be able to um, to create here, it's like it's like asking if Broadway should stop existing, you know, uh, because everyone can sing a song in their, you know, behind their piano at home. Uh, no, I think there will always be a need for Hollywood, and perhaps even more so now, because we need these creatives to come up with things that will motivate us and lift us up. And uh, and so, and um, Marika, I'm. Living. I love your uh, your insights, but I also look at the time, and it's unbelievable how quickly 45 minutes uh, goes, at least from our point of, uh, of view. So I would also love to quickly run through the slides because I know everybody has a schedule, and especially in the Netherlands, it's getting late. Um, so um, yeah, I just want to share you some some useful links, and, and I'm not going to go into it because it's it's a lot of detail. But I would like to invite you that if you have a company in the United States, Los Angeles please uh, reach out to us. We can help you out uh, if the information is not clear or if it's, if it's hard to get. Um, and then I, um, 
I, I asked Jan, um, I'm not in the remote anymore. So Jan, how would you like to go to the next slide? So these are two obvious links. I, you, you probably know better in the Netherlands than I do uh, what is uh, possible, but it's nice to see that it's pretty centralized uh, in two locations. Obviously there will be more information. And I want, I want to go to the last slide. Um, just to highlight some some of the of the webinars that have been already given, uh, also by the uh, the North American Foundation in New York, they were one of the first to to give some uh, some information on uh, on the HR legal aspects. So it's really worthwhile looking at at, at those. Uh, today, everything is about your online presentation, and online communication. So some webinars also given on that. I think look really great one was that one from the e-consulate Michael Doyes last Tuesday. So. Uh, check that one out and a more specific one on the west coast uh, so um, please check it out um, as i said um, please reach out to us on our final slide you will see our uh, contact information and um, please give us suggestions uh, any questions you have and uh, we were really here to help you uh, that's our main message from this we know that everybody's challenge is different and we want to make sure that each and everybody's challenge uh, is, is heard by us. Uh, that's why we are here for. So thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you next time. I wish you a great evening. And for the people in the U.S., a great day. Thank you so much.